Greek New Testament sentence diagramming, part one of a how-to series. What is a sentence diagram anyway? Well, that's not too difficult. A sentence diagram is a grammatical map of a sentence. Or if you're familiar with electronic circuits, you might think of it as something like a schematic diagram. Uh, it has some key components that we'll consider here. Uh, first of all, uh, a sentence diagram has baselines, and those are the parts of the diagram that display the kernel elements of each clause, the subject, the verb, and any complement the verb may have. A baseline looks something like this. There's a long horizontal line that, as you can see, is divided into parts by vertical lines. The verb is in the middle, uh, the subject is on the left, the complement is on the right. Uh, there are shelves. We'll call them shelves for lack of a better word. Uh, shelves display modifiers as hanging below what they modify. So you've got a head word of some sort and then a modifier that gives us more information about that word. That modifier, as you can see, hangs on a little shelf below that head word. Again, for lack of a better word, we can call them branches that show coordinate series of various kinds. So here's an example. You have two items uh, paired in parallel, and a symbol like this shows them as forming a coordinate series. If there's a conjunction that joins them, that conjunction would be written uh, right in this area uh, along that vertical dotted line that joins uh, the two branches. All right, and then one other element that we can talk about here, a stilt, sometimes called a standard, uh, is used to show a sentence element that is too complicated uh, to fit into the slot that would normally be allotted for it. Uh, so here's a little portion of a diagram that shows two baselines, and uh, the stilt portion is this light blue portion right here uh, that indicates that the upper baseline uh, actually constitutes a sentence element that would fit in as the complement of the verb uh, for that lower baseline. So at first glance, it may look like the upper baseline is the main portion uh, of this part of the sentence, and uh, this lower portion hangs below it as a modifier, but that's not the way it works. Uh, with the stilt here, the little stilt arrangement that I'm pointing out, uh, that indicates that this upper baseline actually grows out of uh, this complement slot on the lower baseline. So the lower baseline is the main portion of the sentence, and the upper baseline built on that stilt is actually the secondary portion. Now, there are other diagram symbols than these, uh, but these will give us a good start. Uh, we can't learn everything all at once, so we'll take uh, bits and pieces as we go and this will give us enough to work with for a good little bit of video instruction. The key to sentence diagramming. What is the key to sentence diagramming? Well, you might not like this, but the key to sentence diagramming is a knowledge of grammar. You really cannot diagram things that you haven't already figured out yet. The diagram can only display the grammar that you've already come to perceive in the sentence. So we don't figure out the grammar by somehow drawing a sentence diagram. We don't know what to draw until we have first figured out the grammar. Now that doesn't mean we have to have the grammar completely figured out before we even begin to draw the diagram. Uh, there's a kind of a cyclical process by which we diagram what we know and then as we wrestle with parts that we can't figure out what to do with, we may come back and realize that something we thought we knew wasn't correct and that has to be revised. So uh, there's a process here uh, in which we can start diagramming before we're completely confident about the grammar of the whole sentence, but any particular part of the sentence can't be diagrammed in its final form until we're confident that we understand the grammar of that part of the sentence. Now, I said you might not like that because most people consider grammar to be intimidating. It seems like some kind of a black art or the proverbial rocket science or something. But I'd like to suggest that it's not really that hard once you grasp the basic building blocks. Various grammar teachers have various degrees of success with their students. Perhaps you weren't blessed with a teacher who was effective in teaching grammar. Maybe I'll prove to be ineffective in teaching grammar, but let's give it a try and see if we can't uh, make some improvements beyond what you would know to expect uh, by working with small building blocks and working up. Now, what this means is we're not going to see sentence diagrams in this video instruction quite as early as you might like to see them. Uh, but let's think in these terms. Uh, aviators aspiring aviator might be really excited to get behind the controls of an airplane and begin to fly the thing, but it's not a good idea to skip ground school and just start flying the plane. Uh, ground school undoubtedly is not nearly as fun as flying the plane, but it's very important foundational material. And so I hope you'll be patient for a couple of videos as we work through uh, some basic building blocks of grammatical instruction that I think will give you a good solid foundation on which to progress then uh, when uh, pretty soon really uh, we come to the actual diagramming itself. All right, so what are the building blocks of grammar that we need to pay attention to? Sentences consist of clauses, sometimes only one, sometimes several, but each clause has a kernel, the core of that clause consisting of a verb form, and you probably know already that verbs are words that express an action or they express a state of being of some kind. You know, that's the grammarian's typical definition. It really is not quite adequate because there are a lot of nouns that express action as well. Uh, so how do you know which is a verb? 
Well, a verb is an action word that can take a subject. That's the second element of a kernel. A verb can take a subject. Uh, the subject indicates the person or thing that does the action of the verb. Uh, a noun that names an action can't take a subject that way. Uh, so uh, speak, for example, is a verb because you can say I speak or John speaks or the group has spoken. You can put a noun with that verb to name the actor doing the action. Uh, and that's one of the ways you can tell that you're looking at a verb form, if you can find a subject for that verb. All right, and then many verbs, not always in every clause, uh, but quite often verbs take complements. Uh, the verb might not be complete in and of itself. Uh, it needs to have something that answers the question who or what after the verb. So for supper, we ate, and if I stop right there, for, and I don't tell you what we ate, uh, you're not going to be satisfied that I have given you a complete thought. If my pause is long enough, you're going to interrupt and you're going to say, well, what did you eat? Uh, the complement is that part of the sentence then uh, that is needed to complete the thought expressed by the subject and verb. Now, maybe you noticed my using who and what as defining terms here. Uh, the subject expresses who or what does the action of the verb. The complement expresses who or what receives the action of the verb or explains the state in which the subject exists. These who or what questions are really important, so I want to give you that little animation again a couple of times to help that really register with you. The way you identify the subject and complement is to ask the question who or what before the verb, and then ask that question again after the verb. Now, if you're a real stickler for grammar, you realize that after the verb, you might need to ask the question in the form of whom or what rather than who or what, but we'll just be simple here and call it a who or what question. So, for supper, we ate pizza. Okay, so ate is the verb, who or what ate? We ate, so now I have the verb and the subject. We ate, who or what? We ate pizza. So the who or what questions are really crucial in finding the subject and complement of the verb. There are lots of other questions that various sentence elements can answer. Uh, when, why, how long, for whose benefit, uh, for what reason, uh, with what motive, lots and lots of other kinds of questions can be asked. But when you've got the verb in focus, Whatever answers the question who or what in front of that verb is the subject of the verb. And whatever answers the question who or what after the verb is the complement. Now you've got to ask it just like that, who or what, not for whom, for what reason, by whom, by what, no, no, no. Who or what, the bare who or what questions are uh, your very powerful diagnostic for identifying subject and complement of the verb once you have identified the verb. If those questions don't even work, with the word that you think is the verb, then you're probably not looking at the verb. You need to hunt around the sentence further and find another word that the who or what questions will work for. At least the subject question. Not all verbs have complement, but all verbs have a subject. So last night they came for supper. They came is the verb, who or what came? They came. But you wouldn't even ask who or what after that verb. They came who or what? No, they came when, they came why, in this case for supper. Uh, but you wouldn't even ask the who or what question after that verb. So not every verb has a complement uh, that answers a who or what question, but every verb does have a subject. So if you're looking at a word that you think is a verb, but the who or what question doesn't even make sense, or maybe it makes a certain amount of sense, but you can't find anything in the sentence that would express it, either implied or, or expressed, then you're probably not looking at the verb. You're probably looking at some other part of speech in that sentence. All right, so here's an example that I've uh, included in print on the PowerPoint slide here. Jesus healed the man. And I think you can very quickly see uh, verb, subject, and complement there. The verb is healed, who or what healed, Jesus healed, he healed who or what, he healed the man. All right, uh, moving on here to another key building block of grammar is the idea of a modifier. Uh, a modifier is a word or sometimes a whole phrase uh, that supplies more information about some other word or phrase in the sentence. A modifier expands a smaller idea into something larger with additional information. Uh, an example of a modifier would be Jesus healed the blind man. You see the word blind in blue. That's giving me more information about man. Jesus healed on the Sabbath. Uh, that's a modifier telling me when Jesus did the healing. So there are all different kinds of modifiers, but the key idea here is that a modifier is a word or phrase that gives us more information about another word or phrase. Now, one of the things that you'll notice perhaps uh, growing out of this discussion is the grammatical connections we're looking for are for the most part binary. There are two words that connect this way. You can think of this like building blocks, as the title says. Yes, in Legos, you can have quite complex uh, combinations of connections, but these are very simple building blocks where just two things come together in a certain relationship. Now, a word like a verb can have two different connections. The verb has a subject-verb connection, and it also has a verb-complement connection. 
So that one word does have two different connections, but each of those connections is a separate connection that involves the bringing together of just two things. Uh, and that's really important in grammar, that you learn to look for pairs of things. You're not looking for six things that somehow relate in some complicated way. No, break it down further than that. Look for the pairs of things that relate in a very precise way. All right, then one uh, final building block for us to talk about is a series, and a series is simply a set of parallel items. So uh, we, for supper, we had pizza and potato chips. Uh, you have a two-fold complement there. Uh, some examples that are more biblical in nature, Jesus healed the blind and the lame. So you see two objects for the verb. Second example is one in which there are two verbs, a series of verbs. Jesus died and rose again. So any part of a sentence, uh, in some particular sentence, might be a whole series of items rather than just one item. And uh, this, of course, is very, very common. And I've given you a series of only two, uh, but sometimes you have series that are quite, quite long. All right, so uh, that's the end of this video. I'll give you a sneak peek for what's coming next as we pursue further these building blocks of grammar. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, grammar as a jigsaw puzzle. And uh, these are not uh, real attractive jigsaw puzzle pieces, but I think they give you the idea of how subject, verb, and complement kind of fit together a little bit like puzzle pieces, head words and modifiers, prepositions and objects. So we'll get into that in part two.